it is the capital and most populous city of Ukraine. It is an important industrial, scientific, educational and cultural center of Eastern Europe. It is home to many high-tech industries, higher education institutions and historical landmarks. The city has an extensive system of public transport and infrastructure, including the metro. Hello travelers! Welcome to Alexstar Travelogue. Today I want to tell you about the capital of Ukraine, Kyiv. Since I stuck in Ukraine during this crazy pandemic, I decided to travel to Kyiv once again. I've been to this city many times, but never told you about it. So, let me start from the beginning. There are many trains and flights to Kyiv from every city of Ukraine. Truly speaking, my favorite one is train. Though in Ukraine they are not so modern, but it feels more romantic. The nature, villages and cities outside catch attention and you just want to look at them thinking about coming adventures. Ukraine is a beautiful country, although not all people value it and care about it. It has rich natural and historical heritage with a huge diversity of nationalities and their traditions. During the country's transformation to a market economy and electoral democracy, Kyiv has continued to be as Ukraine's largest and wealthiest city. Last 10 years, new sectors of the economy such as services and finance facilitated Kyiv's growth in salaries and investment, as well as providing continuous funding for the development of housing and urban infrastructure. For most guests, Kyiv starts from its Kyiv Pasajersky railway station. It is a big complex and railway hub consisting of several railroad station buildings, rail yard and other railroad infrastructure. The central station building connected with the southern station building by overpass is the main feature of the railway station. The station complex thus provides long-distance and international services and short-distance services for suburbs, minor city stations and nearby regions. The station is located on so-called Kyiv Southern Railway Loop, serving more than 170,000 passengers per day. The current central station building was constructed in 1932. It was built in the style of Ukrainian Baroque with some elements of constructivism. The central station building is designated as a landmark of architecture. From central station you can travel by bus or subway to any part of the city or country. This is one of the busiest districts of Kyiv. There are many people and hustlers, so watch out your belongings. The most convenient transport is subway. The nearest station is Vokzana. From here you can travel to the city center. It adjoins the complex, constituting the station's main intersection with city transport. The Kyiv Metro is a rapid transit system that is the mainstay of Kyiv's public transport. It was the first rapid transit system in Ukraine and the third system in the Soviet Union after Moscow and St. Petersburg. On the anniversary of the October Revolution, on 6 of November 1960, the five stations that now form the central part of the Red Line, which runs from the west to the east of the city, were opened. Today, Kyiv subway has three lines and 52 stations. The system carries more than 1 million passengers daily. The deepest station in the world, Arsenalna, is found on the system. Everyone who comes to Kyiv will go to the most famous street in Ukraine. Khrushchev has a length of 1.2 kilometers. It stretches from the European Square through the Maidan and to the Bazarovska Square, where the Bazarovsky Market is located. Today, the street is still significant to administrative and business city organizations, as well as a popular tourist attraction. As of 2010, Khrushchev is included in the top 20 of most expensive shopping streets in Europe.
Maidan Nezalezhnosti, literally independent square, is a central square of Kyiv. The square has been known under many different names, but often it is called simply Maidan, square. The most remarkable landmarks here are a monument to founders of Kyiv, independence monument, Hlobus, underground shopping mall, Tchaikovsky National Music Academy of Ukraine and Hotel Ukraina. The square was a place for many important events in Ukraine before and after independence. Famous singers and artists performed here before, but now most events moved to another places. Nowadays it's just a nice place for meetings, street concerts, shopping and enjoying the historical spot of Ukraine. Keep walking down Hrushatek to the side of river Dnipro. You will arrive to European Square. Here you will also see many other historical buildings and expensive restaurants or shops. For passing the squares or large streets you can use underground walkways. Though they are not always clean or don't have light, but they are convenient for pedestrians. On the European Square you will see famous Hotel Dnipro, Ukrainian house, which is the largest international exhibition and convention center in Kyiv and National Philharmonic of Ukraine. A complex of two adjacent concert halls in the Khrushchev Park. And finally, we reached People's Friendship Arch, a monument opened together with the Old Union Lenin Museum, today Ukrainian House, in 1982 to commemorate the 60th anniversary of the USSR and the celebration of the 1500th anniversary of the Kyiv city. Behind the arch there is a popular observation deck on the Dnipro. You will see the left side of Dnipro and Kyiv, Havansky Bridge, New build it po Dilsko Voskresensky Bridge, Parkovy Foot Bridge built in 1957 that connects to the park area to Haniv Island. Nearby, there is another new destination that attracts thousands of people so called Klitschko Pedestrian Bicycle Bridge. It is a newly built bridge that connects the observation deck with St. Vladimir Hill. It is famous for some pieces of floor made of glass, but the glass is dirty and scratched up because of large amount of people walking, jumping and dancing on it. Anyway, don't forget your camera and some tips for the street musician. Unfortunately, there are some buildings which need restoration as soon as possible, otherwise we will not see them in the future. This is a manor of Murashko, built in 19th century and now it belongs to the city municipality. The restoration is in the progress, but no results are seen. Let's hope the government will take care of it. It must be another beautiful building. Kyiv has many religious places, churches and cathedrals which must be visited there, but one of my favorite is St. Sophia Cathedral. The square is named the same Sophia Square. They say that on this place 1000 years ago Grand Prince of Kyiv, Yaroslav the Wise, destroyed enemies and decided to build a square and a cathedral. St. Sophia Cathedral in Kyiv is an outstanding architectural monument of Kyivan Rus. 
The cathedral is one of the city's best-known landmarks and the first heritage site in Ukraine to be inscribed on the World Heritage List along with the Kiev Cave Monastery Complex. Aside from its main building, the cathedral includes an ensemble of supporting structures such as a bell tower and the House of Metropolitan. The complex of the cathedral is the main component and museum of the National Sanctuary Sophia of Kiev, which is the state institution responsible for the preservation of the cathedral complex as well as for other historical landmarks across the nation. The cathedral is named after the 6th century Hagia Sophia Cathedral in Constantinople, Istanbul, which was dedicated to the Holy Wisdom rather than to a specific saint named Sophia. Originally, the cathedral was a burial place of the Kievan rulers. The complex now remains a secular museum of Ukraine's Christianity, with most of its visitors being tourists. The Holy Sophia Cathedral was named one of the seven wonders of Ukraine based on votes by experts and the internet community. Here you may see different performances and musicians who play Ukrainian traditional music, songs and sell their recordings. Golden Gate of Kyiv, Zolotivorota, was the main gate in the 11th century fortifications of Kyiv. It was named in imitation of the Golden Gate of Constantinople. The structure was dismantled in the Middle Ages, leaving four vestiges of its existence. It was rebuilt completely by the Soviet authorities in 1982, though no images of the original gates have survived. The decision has been immensely controversial because there were many competing reconstructions of what the original gate might have looked like. The rebuilt structure on the corner of Volodymyr Street and Yaroslav Val Street contains a branch of the National Sanctuary Sofia of Kyiv Museum. The name Zolotivorota is also used for a nearby theater and the Zolotivorota station of the Kyiv Metro. If you look for some entertainment, Kyiv has National Opera of Ukraine. It is named after Taras Shevchenko in Kyiv. The opera theater was considered to be one of the most prestigious in Ukraine and Russia. Another popular entertaining sport is Olympijski National Sports Complex, the 16th largest sports venue in Europe. After walking through the city and looking at the beautiful architecture, you can always find a lot of events anywhere in Kyiv. St. Nicholas Roman Catholic Cathedral is the second oldest Roman Catholic church standing in Kyiv after the St. Alexander Roman Catholic Cathedral. Today the building is shared between the Roman Catholic Church of Ukraine and the National House of Organ and Chamber Music. It was constructed in 1909 and was built by the Latin Rite Catholic community in a Gothic-type construction. A design competition held in 1898 selected Stanislav Volovsky, whose entry was a Gothic-type construction with two 60-meter towers. The construction work was carried out by exclusively from voluntary donations and lasted for 10 years. Since 1992, Catholic Masses and concerts have been held here. Most of the services are conducted in the Ukrainian language, while on Sunday services conducted in Polish, Latin and in Spanish. Especially for Organ Hall, Masters of Rigor Kloss Company constructed a big concert organ. This is a typical Ukrainian Gothic-style building with very tall walls and high ceiling. 
is decorated with amazing huge chandeliers, stained glass windows, sculptural ornaments. Of course, I wanted to see the concert, I booked tickets before the performance in the nearby ticket office, but you also can book online. The price range is from 50 to 500 hryvna, depending on the seats and the vision of the stage. Since during pandemic there were many vacant seats, I changed my place after this concert started. On the evening I listened to works by Vivaldi and Batch. After sunset, this place becomes even more magnificent and looks magically. Kiev architecture consists of different styles, colors and designs. Among them Chocolate House, Iskul Hilden Brand House and Kovalevsky Manor on Shovkovichna Street are very famous. This is Chocolate House, an official name of a manor of Mohilevce, where famous scientists, artists and politicians live. The Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine is the unicameral parliament of Ukraine. It meets in a neoclassical building on Kyiv's Mykhailo Hrushevsky Street and Ploshcha Konstitutsi. The building adjoins Mariinsky Park and the 18th century Mariinsky Palace. After the transfer of the capital of the Ukrainian SSR from Kharkiv to Kyiv in 1934, a whole set of government buildings was planned for the city. In 1936, the contest for the construction of the new parliament building was won by architect Volodymyr Zobolotny. The original building was constructed in 1938. Having been destroyed in the Second World War, the building was reconstructed with a rebuilt glass dome one meter higher than the original. Marinsky Palace is the official ceremonial residence of the President of Ukraine in Kyiv. It is a Baroque palace designed by Bartolomeo Rastrelli on the hilly bank of the Dnipro River. Marinsky Park is located in Pachersk neighborhood in front of the Supreme Council of Ukraine, Hrushevsky Street and Park Road. It is also a Soviet necropolis. The park is recognized as part of the Nature Preservation Fund of Ukraine, yet its official listing is not known. It is around 130 years old. It received its name from the nearby Marinsky Palace. Marinsky Park was founded in 1874 near central entrance of the palace and the money for its foundation were budgeted by the wife of the Alexander II of Russia. Finally, I could visit the place I've been dreaming about since childhood, State Aviation Museum. It's located next to Zhulani Airport. The museum offers both aircraft exhibits and interactive displays. It is one of the largest aviation museums displaying Soviet technology. The museum opened its doors to the public on 30 September 2003. Both premises and planes are provided by the National Aviation University which continues to use some of the exhibits as educational props on site. Started with only 30 machines, today the museum owns the exposition of more than 80 aircrafts and helicopters. Visitors are allowed to get on board and walk through some planes where you can see the interior and read some useful and interesting information about technical characteristics of plane and its history. On some planes you even can sit on pilot seat and see how it feels. Unfortunately all the exhibit items look and smell very old. At least they need to be renovated. Let's hope that in the near future we will see some new and modern machines.
if you ever wanted to see how planes look from inside, how the engines work and what they consist of, there is a museum of aircraft engines too. There are very unusual planes and helicopters with colorful pictures and titles. So, this is all I wanted to tell you about Kyiv. In the next video, you will see where to stay in this city. Don't forget, let's discover the world together!